Hey, your friend, Chris here from WideLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Today, I want to show you how you can transpose your different tracks in your projects so that if you need to transpose the project up a couple tones or down a couple tones, you can do this regardless if it's audio or MIDI. I'll show you three different ways of going about this, plus, you know, some workarounds along the way. And also by the end of this video, I'll show you how you can transpose the entire contents of your project in one fell swoop using VeraSpeed without messing with the timing of your project. So let's dig in. All right, first things first, we have a demo in front of us. Let's take a quick listen and then we'll dig into transposing all our different track types. Okay, so as you can see, we have different track types, specifically on purpose. Number one, we have Drum Machine Designer with the Atlanta kit, and these are, you know, pattern regions. Following that, we have MIDI regions of different software instruments, and then we have audio regions as well, which are actually based on software instruments that I bounced in place. But now we have these different region types that we're going to be transposing or, you know, keeping in place so they don't get transposed. The first place you want to look when you are transposing, you know, most of the contents of your projects is right up here in the global track lanes. And we can see that we have transpose and tempo. And if you right click or hold control and click anywhere in the global track lanes, you have different options that you can hide or show. So the transposition track lane is what we're most concerned with. And this allows you to transpose, you know, up, up to 12 semitones or down. And you can change this on a per section basis so that if you click on this orange line, you create nodes. And if we you know, pull up or down on those nodes, you can see the notes change in the MIDI regions, which is super cool because maybe you want to transpose the contents, everything below this section up by 10 semitones. And then you want to transpose everything beyond that point down or keep everything the same, whatever your pleasure is. You can do that using the transpose track lane. We're going to set everything back to where I had it. And what I'm most concerned with is transposing, you know, the entire project as a whole, not specific sections. So I'm going to create a node and I'm going to drag that node all the way to the beginning of the project. And this will ensure that everything from bar one on will be transposed. So let's start by going to the key signature here and let's change it to anything other than the original key sig. So I'll change this to B minor. And you can see the notes have started to shift around in the MIDI regions. And once I've created this note here in the transpose global track lane, we can then use the key sig, you know, instead of dragging up and down on the line here, we can just change the key sig. So there we have it. So let's take a listen and see if everything has been transposed, the drums, the software instruments, and the audio. Take a listen and then we'll explore. Okay, so as you can hear, some things have changed, all of the software instruments, but the audio stayed the same and the drums have stayed the same. One is optimal. We probably prefer that our drums not change their notes or their values, but the audio we do want to transpose. So let's set this back to the original key sig. And let's focus on the drums real quick. So if we take a listen to these drums as is. And then if we change the key, take a listen again. They don't change. And that's because if you go to the track inspector here in the inspector, we have an option called no transpose that you can set on a per software instrument basis. And what's really great is Drum Machine Designer, when you load an instance of it, this is automatically turned on. If we set this back to the original key and then turn off no transpose and then change the key, take a listen. This option allows us to keep our notes, whether it be a pattern region or a MIDI region, exactly in place. No transposition occurs. So let's set this back. 
turn that on. But if we navigate to something like the software instruments here, take a listen. And when we change the key, awesome. So that's really helpful. But again, it doesn't really help us in the audio region department. Now this transpose global track lane will transpose the following. Number one, obviously software instruments, unless you've specified no transpose in the track inspector. Apple loops, whether it be MIDI Apple loops or audio Apple loops, except for any Apple loops that are drums or don't have any sort of key signature already specified and embedded in those Apple loops. So one way you could work around this, if you have a project that's not too intense, is you could open the Apple Loops browser, and let's close all of this down. You could take your audio regions and drag them into the Apple Loop browser and create Apple Loops from them. Now at the moment, we don't have the option to set a key signature, and that's because the end of this region doesn't land exactly on a bar. If we go up to the snap section, I'm gonna to set to absolute value, so that we can make sure this absolutely snaps to the bar. And if we go to the beginning of the region, we can see it starts on bar one. So let's drag it into the Apple Loop browser again. And now we have the option to name our audio region. That's now going to become an Apple Loop. We can also set the key signature and everything else. And then you can click create. From here, Logic is going to bounce this audio region in place, but just to save time, I've gone ahead and already committed to this action. And let's find the auto shuffle pluck that I've created as an Apple loop and drag it in. Cool. So it's gonna be a bit louder. I'm gonna set this to negative nine, but if we take a listen, you can hear that they're pretty much the same. A little louder, but from here, once you start to transpose, check it out. Let's now change the key signature, again, because we've created a node on the transpose lane at the very beginning of the project. Let's change this to maybe B minor. Or to anything else. So the audio region is now being transposed along with the key signature in the transpose global track lane. We can just prove that by doing this. Okay, so let's back things up here and set to our original key. That's one workaround. If you don't have a lot of tracks and you know you don't want to go through some of these other steps, you could do this. Obviously, it takes a little bit of work to create an Apple loop to bounce it and then bring it back into the project. You probably don't prefer that. So instead, another solution is to go to the region inspector and use the transpose function for each MIDI instrument and audio file as well. If we take our MIDI instrument here and let's just zoom in and let's take a listen again. We can actually transpose on a per region basis. So we could transpose this right up an octave or down an octave or anywhere in between. And what's great is you can do the same thing with audio regions as well. And this can be on a per region basis. So let's transpose these regions up by a few semitones. And let's take a listen to just these regions. Versus the original. So if you put it all together, you can select every track in your session, except for the drums, if you don't want to transpose your drums, and you could set the transpose, you know, up by however many semitones or down by however much you need. And if we take a look, we'll just set this on for the MIDI regions as well, and take a listen. Seems like we've got some stuff we gotta fix, so let's do that right now. 
double check. And let's transpose that. Here we go. And you can see that each region gives us a number, either plus or minus, to let us know if it's been transposed on a per region basis. If you're happy and satisfied with transposing your different regions and you want to commit to them, for MIDI, you can just go to functions, go down to MIDI region parameters, and you can actually apply all parameters permanently. So now we can see the eight has disappeared and these regions have been committed to their transposition. We can undo and then set this back down if we wanted, and you can see the changes occur. And then for audio, you can just bounce in place if you want to commit this transposition to the audio. Cool, so let's set everything back, and let's now explore how to use VeraSpeed for transposing everything in your project. Now, what I should point out here is, is that everything in your project is going to get transposed. Regardless, if you've set the track inspector parameter to no transpose, like for example, our drums, we've set to no transpose, doesn't matter. Everything will get pitched up or down. This is gonna be more of a creative affectation to your project, but it could be really cool to record and play around and mess around with transposing without you know, digging into each of the region inspectors if you don't want to. Okay, I'm going to right click in the control bar, customize control bar and display and ensure that VeraSpeed is enabled under the LCD section. VeraSpeed is a cool function in Logic Pro that allows you to speed up or slow down your project as a whole, much like a tape machine. And if we try it right now, if we adjust the speed going down by maybe 20%, everything in the project is going to get sped down. Or we can go up. which is kind of sick. I'm going to set this back to zero. And what we want to do is, is we want to click right here where it says speed only. And we want to change it from speed only to very speed, speed and pitch. So now if we make any sort of adjustment to the project, not only will it speed up or slow down, but it will change in pitch accordingly. So this might seem kind of like, why would we do this? But check it out. If you click on the percentage here, you can change the sort of affectation that you're imposing on the project based on either percentage or resulting tempo or detune by semitones or sense or by a tuning reference. So we're going to set this to detune and we're going to set it down eight semitones. And let's check it out. As you can hear, we've now pitched the entire project down eight semitones, but it's slower as well. It's not just pitch, it's slowed down. And I don't want to change the timing at all of the project. I want to just change the pitch of the entire project. So if we go into those different options again, I'm going to select from detune resulting tempo. Now we can see that the tempo according to Vera speed is roughly about 75, 76 BPM. Okay, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to change the tempo up here in the BPM. We're going to start speeding up the tempo until we get back to the original tempo here in VeraSpeed. So we were at a BPM of 120. So I'm going to pump this up till I get roughly at about 120. Let's see if I can get down one. Okay. Now we're going to start playing with the decimal points of the BPM here. So we get exactly to... 120. Now check it out. Okay, but you can hear and see that our audio has not changed at all in terms of its timing. And that's because we need to select our audio files, go to the region inspector, and set flex and follow to on. Now, Everything shifts according to the timing based on Vera speed.
So everything's in time, transposed, but at the same tempo. This could be a very creative opportunity to, you know, mess with the pitch of the entire project and then record to it. Then from here, if you bounce out the project, you will be bouncing out the project at the very speed tempo, at that reduced pitch, and everything will line up. Cool. So those are the three different ways for transposing your tracks in your sessions or transposing the project as a whole using VeriSpeed or not transposing your tracks at all. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it has, as always, I highly recommend subscribing to the channel, YLogic Pro Rules, or subscribing on the website itself, YLogicProRules.com. Every week, I'm posting new emails, videos, and posts to help you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Thanks so much.